Here we are again. We're just testing. Hello. We're going to show you number three. Number two. Why are you trying to save a dead joke? <laughs> Welcome to another video of Do You Know What To Do. Today we're going to show you how to make a beautiful cover for this cushion. If you need a cover or want to learn how to make a cover, keep, keep on, on watching. watching. Before we get started, we always like to tell you what supplies or tools you're going to need so your project goes smoothly. And that's what we're going to do right now. Start off first, you're going to need a pair of scissors. All right. You're going to need some stick pins. Mm -hmm. Important. You're also going to need some tracing fabric. Right, you can use any fabric. Well, obviously we have this white muslin here, but you could use scrap fabric. You don't have to go out and buy it. Just as long as you can see the marks that need to be on there when you're tracing. Perfect. Now, uh, you're gonna need something to make those marks, and that's a pencil or a pen. All right, either one will work. You're gonna need a tape measure. You can mm -hmm. use metal, mm -hmm. but of course, cloth is always best. Perfect. Next, you're gonna need some uh, zippers. Right, and you can pre-order these in, in cut size. You don't need to buy the whole uh, chain of uh, zippers if you don't want. Just go six inches up or more. Depends on if you need a, if you have a real deep cushion, you can go up even further. As long as it's hidden, you know, by the furniture itself. But standard six inches, count that measurement, add that measurement, six more inches, and then order the cut size. All right. Okay. Next, you're going to need a straight edge. Mm -hmm. Straight edge. And last but not least, you're going to need some cording. Right, it's important to get the right size. The standard size is 5 30 seconds. It's 5 slash 32. So get that because uh, we cut our cording to fit this size, and that's the standard size. All right, that's okay. it. All right, so now we're going to grab our muslin and start tracing. We're going to show you how easy it is to make a top cushion cover for those worn, beat-up old cushion covers that you have to replace them. Perfect. So let's go ahead and get started. We're going to simply grab our muslin here and uh, start to trace. Right, so we're going to put it over top, make sure it's kind of nice and smooth and taut, mm -hmm. and then we're going to pin it down, Right. and then you're going to take your pencil. We have Taylor's charcoal as well. We can mm -hmm. use that, but we're going to use the pencil, and trace the cording. Now, right. one thing I did notice is since we are going to be using the cording, what would happen if they didn't have any cording? <laughs> That's a good question. It's, it's very difficult to trace a cushion, know, obviously you can do it, but it's difficult to trace a cushion uh, without cording, like like you just said. You just have to get a thin fabric. That's that's a good good question uh, because you have to feel the seam underneath there, and just you know look underneath there occasionally, make sure you're following the seam line. That's all you got to do. I've been there uh, thousands of times, so thin tracing fabric's important. Okay, and just keep on looking, make sure you're staying on the, on the mark. Okay, so take okay. your time. Right. Now, obviously, if this was a rectangle, just you can just use measurements. Right. And add a half inch on, on each side. Measure the seams and keep going. Right, exactly. So we're doing this because it's a T-cushion. That's why we're doing the tracing here. And uh, incidentally, I'm glad you're making me think about the other things that are important, too. It's best to trace on a platform, not the cushion cover itself, because people sit on it, it gets distorted, right. or it's been laundered, and it's shrunk. Uh, but we didn't have that privilege because the client came and dropped this off here saying, I want a new insert and a new cover. So I asked her, does it fit well? She said, yeah. I said, so you like the fit of it? She said, yeah. So what am I going to do? All right. Okay. We don't have the chair, so. Right. So what we're going to do, I, I like to go in the inside of the cording here, just like this. Right. So you get your pencil right in that groove? Right. You could do the outside, like you mentioned with Taylor's chalk. You could, you could, we're just going to do this here real quick. You, you can do that. I mean, that, that's simple, easy, where you can just go right inside the groove here. But not everybody has Taylor's chalk, so. No. You know, you can maybe just use your kid's uh, uh, sidewalk chalk. Yeah, you can use a crown if you want. You could do that. Simple, easy. So that's all we're going to do. We're going to keep tracing this. Right, so we'll get this done and get right back to you then. Perfect. All right, so you're done with the tracing. Yeah, I'm all finished. Now, I know the next step is to pick a side, and that is important. Now, why is. is that? Well, because cushions get worn out sometimes on just one side or, or uh, you know, the cording's waving quite a bit, which hopefully is not your case. And uh, you want to pick a side that is closest to uh, as it originally was, in good shape. 
okay? And, there's, and we'll show you in just a minute as to why that's important. So maybe look at one of the cushions. If you're doing like a sofa, you're doing multiple ones, or, you know, this is a chair here. Uh, maybe it was never flipped much, and that's good. Well, it's bad in the long run. You want to flip your cushions often, but the one that uh, didn't get flipped much, flip it over, and the cording and everything's probably still in good shape. So use that as your tracing uh, side. But okay. if you still have one side that's a little bit off, you can just use that one side and mark that and then copy on the other side. Right. That's Yeah, exactly. So we're going to pick uh, this side. We're fortunate, even though the middle's really bad shape, but the, the, the cording and stuff is in pretty good shape. The, the front uh, piping here, cording. Seems pretty straight. Pretty, not too bad. So we're going to pick this side. I like to make a little X mark there or a uh, check mark. And another thing I like to do, too, is take my, uh, my border or band size here. And this is coming up three and a half, okay? But the um, the insert that we're going to put in here, we had a feather uh, down, all feather insert made, and they don't do half measurement. So we had to round it up to four. So I'm not going to keep this three and a half. We're going to do four. We're going to do four because they, they, they make the allowance. So I'm, if I made it smaller, I'm going to make it, a, unless you want that, but you're going to have a, a, a very high crown. So I'm going to make this, as he just said, four. And I like to just put a four there and circle it. Okay, and uh, then we're going to take this off and demonstrate what you were just discussing about picking a side or push this out of the way. Grab the cover. There we go. Yeah. Now what you want to do, we're going to pick this side. So let me get over here with you. Let me change places with you. All right. And we're just going to come in and cut halfway. You know what? I, I, I want to show you this too, just in case this is your issue. This one doesn't look too bad. Sometimes you'll see them because, like I said, they get worn out. They're really baby. bowed. Right, yeah. really bowed, right. So what we can do is line it up as the best you can here and here. Okay, I think I'm there. Yeah, and then I'm going to make a new mark here, back and forth. I just want a nice dark line. That's why I keep doing it over and over. Okay, and that's a dark line. Okay, yeah. so that's not too bad. So, so you can see it kind of went off path right there. Right. But not too bad. Some are a lot worse. Oh, yeah, some of them are really bad. So most likely, um, you know, your platform's still straight, hopefully, um, if it's not a spring platform, but um, a spring edge, I mean. But uh, you should be fine. Keep it straight, and it'll look good. Okay, mm -hmm. so what we're going to do is cut right on the line. And I emphasize that because when we cut our top cover, we're going to cut a half inch out. Hence for seam allowance. Yes, exactly. So we're gonna go up here. So I'll get this done and get right back to you then. All right. Okay, so we're all cut on this side. I'm just gonna simply fold it over and line it up with the other pencil marks on that end. And we do this to make the cushion cover symmetrical. Right, it's very important, especially if you're using a pattern, okay? So if by chance you see yours on, on your pattern, the pencil marks way off. Let's just say the, the T here is lining up, that's nice, but right here my pencil mark is way off. You can split the difference. Just go back and forth until you split the difference, okay? So the uh, the line that I made earlier with the heavy pencil marking went ballistic. Yeah, it looks great. Looked at, worked out very well, so that's nice and straight. And the back I had to do a little bit of adjustments on, but uh, no big deal. So all we're gonna do is simply cut this out. Yeah, but we actually have one already cut out for this occasion. We are gonna do that because uh, we're gonna use this one here because this is what we ordered earlier in another video, the uh, feather insert with. So I just wanted to all match, everything's uh, uh, cohesive, sticking together and, and um, working out. So we're gonna use this one for the top cover. That right. is, but we're showing you how you can make your own right now. Simply cut right along where the other cuts are. Okay. And now I'm going to pull this over a little bit. I don't like how it's that far away, but it's okay. Just like that. We're going to finish that up. Okay. Just like that is perfectly fine. And now we're going to add the half inch on the top cover, which we're going to show you how to do that. All right, perfect. You know, we actually got to go. Yeah, we do. Yeah, so we've got a, uh, a delivery to make, and we're going to come back later on, and it's going to be dark most likely, and you're going to see us finish this up. All right, perfect. Okay. 
Okay, so we're back, and that delivery went really easy. Definitely. Yeah, there was no time. So we're going to get right back on this cushion here and show you how to cut it out. Here's our template that we're going to use to cut out the cushion. Right. And here's our cover fabric. Now, I notice we have two sections mm -hmm. of the cover fabric. Are we doing two different cushions? Uh, no, we're not doing two different cushions. That's a great question. Uh, the reason why is when I fold this over, it's, uh, it's not wide enough. You know? Okay. That's all. So hopefully your situation, you can just fold it over. But what we had to do was um, uh, cut the uh, proper depth, two of them, and then we're going to open them up like this. And I got a little arrow that I put on there okay, okay to show me the, the, the direction of the fabric. Because this one has a pile. It has a pile. And if yours has a pile, what you want is a smooth to go out. So you want to be able to slide right on out of that seat in a hurry. <laughs> all right. Okay. That's all you got to do is just make sure the smooth goes out. Okay. Right. And... Um, then we're gonna open this up over here and put them together. All right, so that way we can cut out two at the same time. Yep it's The bottom be... and the top. Yes. If you would. Yes I'm just gonna double check make sure I didn't put the error in correctly. And it seems right. Okay All right, so oh, there's more customers. Oh, yeah, that sounds good Okay, so what we're gonna do is lay now, like I said, smooth out, so you're the smooth one, and you're gonna go this direction, so the face of the, uh, or the front of the cushion is towards you, and uh, where are the Zip zippers? Band. All right. yeah. Where are the zippers? Okay, right here. So, um, that's it. We're gonna cut a half inch outside of here, and make sure you don't make the mistake and cut right along this, because when you sew it, you're gonna be... In an inch. You're going to be in an inch. It's going to be too short. So just don't make that mistake because we all do it and I've done it. Um, just make a little notation. Cut a half inch out. Do not cut online because you get interrupted. You've been there. We've been there. It happens all the time. Right. That you, if it's all the fabric you have, there's nothing you can do about it. Okay? That's a bad situation to be in. It is. You can also take this particular fabric here and do like a throw pillow or you could do your, your welt or cording here. It'll work out fine. So we're going to get started in cutting this out. So as you can see, we cut a half inch outside the cushion, put some right. pins in it. And we're going to put this over here. And we also made the uh, zipper bands, and th that's the, those over here. And this is yep. the front band. And to get that, just simply get a straight edge right here, as close as you can, um, making sure you know it's, it's nice and straight, not crooked. And then take your tape measure, and we switched over this yellow uh, uh, pencil. Right. And we need these bands to be four inches, so you cut five inch for a half inch on each side. Made a mark here and a mark here. Take our straight edge, line those up as we did earlier, and then and just cut simply right cut down. the line right on out. Yeah. So now that you do that, you're going to need three, okay? Two for the zipper bands for this method and one for the front, yep. okay? And you should be enough to tie in, grab those zipper bands there. There you go. Okay, and you walk it around and split this in half, the front band, and you're going to walk it around toward the back and okay. about six, seven inches up the side, do seven up the side here. So you have seam allowance of the, um, the zipper bands. Right. And this cutoff piece you can sew to the front band. Okay, so I'm hoping that makes sense to you. You don't need a fourth band. If you have enough fabric, just do a fourth band because the front band is not enough to go all the way around. That's the whole point. You gotta make this longer. But we okay? have extra on the zipper band, so you just cut off the extra on the zipper band, put on the front band, Right, should be pretty good. Yeah, so you know you got a pile, so just make sure it's running the same direction when you sew to the front band, and you're good to go. So we're, you know, we're gonna do that, and now we need to get the, uh, the piping or the cord, okay? So that's our next step. All right, so let's do that. Okay, so we have all the bands cut. These right, right here are our zipper bands. Okay. We got them folded in half. We're going to iron them down later. Right. And we've cut these to the proper length, to the amount that comes up to the sides. Okay. Right. So we can push these aside. And the next step is going to be the uh, cording. Right. So let's get the main fabric here. Yeah. Now, when you do the cording, always cut on the bias when you can. Why is that? Well, because it keeps down the snaking of the cushions, you know, the, the cording rather. You see that that snaking and that curving and twisting and you straighten it out and then you sit down and it's back it's going to do that over and over and over because it probably was not cut on the bias that is the the fabric okay it was not cut on the bias you can cut on the straight here and here but it's always best to go this direction okay because right. that, that eliminate that problem so we're going to fold it that way right so we're going to open it up like this and turn it like that okay, okay. so the cut end here that was here is now 
with the salvage and over here. Okay, there we go. Now I measured how many inches we need for the cushion. That's obviously be the top and the bottom. So it was uh, 204. So always add like 20 inches because you lose inches when you put them together and sewing them. Okay, so always give yourself a little bit more. So let's just do 225. It should be enough for all the cushion. All right. Okay, to complete the cushion. We have the straight edge here, which is an inch and a half. Now why an inch and a half? Because that corresponds with the 532nd uh, measurement or size, I should say, that on the on the cording that we mentioned earlier. It should give you about half inch of seam allowance. On both sides, on. right. So when you cover over your cording, then you have a half inch seam allowance on both sides. Okay. So an inch and a half should work out just fine, okay, with 532nd cording. So all you're going to do is just watch us simply make these marks, cut on down uh, on the sides, and then... Um, do the quick measurements, see if we got 225, and then move on. You don't have to cut both layers if you don't want to. You can uh, just cut the top fabric. Right, so if you need to save some of this fabric, just like he just said, cut the top. Or just cut both and then realize it's times two. Yeah. Okay, so let's move on. Here's a helpful little hint when you're making cording to always have it go in the same direction. It's very important, especially if your fabric has a pile. Okay? Right, because you're going to see different shadows and stuff like if that. If they're going in different directions, you definitely will. Make marks at the bottom, okay, all on one side, and then simply have them continue because this one doesn't have the mark. I put it down here, and at the sewing table, which we will show you how to do, we're going to simply sew it like this, and then you have one continuous long piece going in the same direction. Right. You don't want that shadowing, okay? It's a good habit to get into no matter what fabric you're working with. However, we've got business to do. We've got emails, emails. and we've got phone, phone calls. calls to return. So we're going to see you tomorrow. So we're back and we're going to show you a simple, easy way to do cording for your cushions. Right. Okay, we're going to start off with the yellow marks that we made earlier. And we got one with the yellow mark here. We're going to turn it correct side up. We're going to grab our next cording strip, have the yellow mark down here to my right, and we're going to put correct side to correct side. And we're going to put them on top of each other like this. Okay. Now this pencil here is going to represent the sewing uh, needle, okay, on the machine. And you're going to go to start, rather, at my top left down to my bottom right, okay? So when you're completed, you're going to pull your cording over like this, and it's at an angle, or a diagonal. And that's going to help reduce seeing the seam marks, okay, rather than just going straight up and down sewing it, okay? So that's one way to uh, do it where it reduces the seams. But here's something more important about the seams. Make sure your stitch is tight. And the reason why that is, is because when you lay your cording in there, which I have one I've already sewn right here, and if your cording is not, if your uh, strips are not, have or do not have a tight stitch, then when you put your cording in there, you're going to see the cording behind there. Right. And that looks terrible. Uh, you, you're not going to like it. You do all this work, all these cushions, all this upholstery, stapling, and your cording has a loose seam. That's terrible. So make sure that stitch is tight. And to make sure that it's tight, you usually have a lower number. So you turn down to what me like what? One, two? Uh, two, yeah, something like that, right? The lower the number that you can handle, or your machine, I should say, can handle, you can handle it, but your machine may not be able to, the better, okay? Now, another thing to consider when you're working uh, your, with your cording off a spool is pull off a sizable amount, get a piece of fabric, and just pull out all those kinks and curls, because that'll help reduce the snaking in your cording. All right. Okay. Now, one more thing. If you're working with a cording foot, great. If you need to buy one, you're going to get a quarter inch if your machine can take one. Some homeowner machines don't have them. But um, if you can get one, get a quarter inch because that will correspond with a cording size of 530 seconds that we mentioned to you earlier. Quarter inch cording foot for your machine, 530 seconds cording. Okay. Now, if you can't get one, don't worry about it. Just use a zipper foot. It's perfectly fine. Just get real close because you want the tight cording, tight seams. All right. Okay. So now we're going to go over to the sewing machine and you're just going to see me put these together. It's so simple, so easy, and uh, you probably already know it. Yeah. But and actually kind of fun too. Yeah. So let's get started.
So now the cording is being sewn right now. And the next step is the zipper bands. Now, this fabric probably won't iron down that nice, but nevertheless, you want to give it the best crease that you can. So you're going to get your iron, make sure you get it the right setting, depending on your fabric. And just give it a little bit of a crease there. It makes it a little bit easier to work with when you're at the sewing table. Just keep going back and forth. Like I said, this one won't crease that well, but we're going to try our best with this one. After that, you crease both of them and then take it to the sewing table and sew it to the zipper. Before we start sewing the zipper band, we're going to show you how to put it together at the table. Right, okay. Get your zipper. We've already cut it to length. Have your tab or your slide, okay, facing up. Take one of the sides, put it as close as you can to the teeth on the zipper, and then take your uh, zipper foot, put it on the machine, go as sew as close as you can to the teeth on one side, put the other side on. We're going to show you this too at the table. And when you come back, when you come back around, then you're going to sew across and come back down as well. So you're going to go up like this, so to speak, and then across and then right back down so that it's all connected. Okay, so we'll go to the table and show you how to do that. Let's get started. Okay, it turned out pretty well. The fabric's so thick it's kind of hard to work with, but hopefully yours isn't. Yeah, it okay. looks beautiful. Yeah, not too bad. Okay, so the next thing to do is take your zipper bands. Let me zip this up a little bit. Take your zipper band, fold it in half, make a small notch with a pair of scissors. Okay, just get your halfway point here and then on that side. Do the same thing with your front band, which I already did. I got a couple of small notches there. And we did the same thing for the cushions. And the point is, we're trying to find out how far does the front band wrap around this T-cushion. Right. Not that far. And we're going to find the same thing when it comes to the zipper band, too. Find our notch here. Simply walk it around. You obviously can use pens here to keep it still. Okay. And now the front band here. Let's pull this back down a little bit. Okay. Front band, do the same thing. Center it off. Yep. Walk it around where it's going to be sewn. We'll take a pen and put it here. Okay. So we're just so a little bit off. We're a little short, right. And you want it to be balanced and symmetrical. Okay. If you can. If you can't, then, you know, it's your cushion. Do what you want. Right. But we like to make them balance. Just a little slice, a splice in here, a little splice in there. Same equal sizes. Right. Okay? And we're going to use the uh, extra from the zipper band that we had before. We showed you that. And we're going to splice that in. Right. So all we're going to do is sew this onto the zipper band like this at the table. And then sew this to the front band the appropriate amount. All you need is a half inch for attachment. That's all you need on the zipper band and the front band. So we're going to sew those together. And obviously it's going to be uh, balanced on this side to that side. So sew this one on as well right now. The goal which you really want is just one long band. That's all we're wanting. Thank you. That's all we're looking for. So we're going to sew 
we're going to we're going to cut this down because this is too much right if we kept this on that seam would come up around the side i don't want it there you don't want it there so we're going to sew this um, i'm going to cut it off the appropriate amount sew it onto the front band right sew this on but don't sew it onto the zipper yet we're going to show you that that's we're going to close that yeah okay that's the pocket that's the zipper slide pocket okay on this side so that's it let's get it done all right let's do it So now we're at the point of where we sew everything together. Yep, we sewed it all. Uh, the, the splice in that is, the uh, pieces on the side, we sewed them all together, okay? We took our zipper band, our notch, and walked it all the way around, okay? Uh, around the sides here and up to the front, and the notch came close. It's never gonna be 100%. In the front. In the front, right. But see, this is a solid, so you don't need any pattern line up on this one, so we're okay. What we're trying to do is just have a guide where the splice in or the patches, whatever you wanna call them, are pretty much balanced on the cushion. At the correct length. At the correct length, right. So when we get over the sewing table, which we're gonna show you how to do this there, is you're gonna to wanna to take your cording, this is what you're gonna to wanna to do, take your cording, start from the zipper area, and then come up about maybe, I don't know, maybe six inches, leave some excess cording here, okay? And we're gonna start sewing on this side, okay? And then we're gonna go all the way around with our cording and our band all the way back around to the point where we need to close it. But we're gonna stop right there to show you how to close it, okay? So just start on the side here, leave yourself some excess, it's very important on the cording, and sew all the way around to uh, the band, to the, the cushion cover with the cording sandwiched in between there. And we're gonna show you, all okay? Right. Let's, get, Let's started. get started. Okay, so we got to our stopping point. Here's the band. I stopped right here and I backstitched, okay? And I cut off all the excess cording that we didn't need. And the next step is to get this cording 
sewn together. So I take these snips, I'm gonna open these up. Okay. Like this, go about maybe, I don't know, two inches. Now you're opening up to cut the cording itself, correct? Right, right, exactly. We just want it, we want them to uh, butt up against each other. So that, that's what we're looking for. And I left enough so they, so they pass each other, okay? By at least, I think, three inches. All right. Okay, so we're going to take these like this, lay it down flat, your cover. Okay. And snip, bring them together, let them bypass each other like this, okay? All right. And snip the cording, not the fabric yet, snip the cording like together. That, together, okay? I like to give myself a little bit of extra. It looks like it was going to be too short, so right there. All right. Get your fingers and stuff out of the way. Now, I like to take these two, stand them up like this. Okay. Okay. I'm making it flat as if it was sewn. Okay. This fabric's a little tough to deal with. Yeah. Okay. Lay these down like this. This is just one way you can do it. If you know a better way, then, then go with that, okay? I'm trying to put these together, laying them flat. Oh, this is getting twisted. I'm sorry. Hold on, I had it wrong. Take the turn. Lay these flat like this. Okay, look at All that. Right. Okay, it makes sense, right? Flat, flat, just imagine it's sewn. Okay. Okay. Take a snip of your scissors like this. Just like that. Make a little notch right there. Sew right, uh, right along that line. Right along that snip. Okay? okay? That's where I want you to put your seam. Right there. So when you're done, then you're going to just cut it a half inch away from your your um, your stitches. So here, right here, this my thumb right here is the stitches, all the way across the thread, and then we're going to cut a half inch away. All right. And then we're going to close that up. Okay. Okay. So let's go back to the machine, and that's that's what we did. We just made a simple mark, flush, but don't go all the way across cutting it. I made it a little snip that represents the stitches. Okay. Okay. So let's go to the machine, and then we'll sew that. Put this together and we're going to come back real, real quick and show you how to close this whole thing up. Simple. Okay, so we finished sewing down the cording, and the next step is to make the zipper uh, pocket. And that is, we're gonna sew down here like this, fold this fabric up like that, so, yeah. right? And then this is going to go right over top of it. So the other side has a little zipper pocket, Perfect. or a slide pocket. 
okay? So once again, right down here, fold this. So right down here, fold this over, run this over top, and we're gonna run, stitch this, and then right at the top here, you're gonna base that or just put a stick or, yeah, a stick pen through here. Until you do the other side. Until you do the other side. And incidentally, too, um, as you go along when you're sewing this, now's the time to check for the imperfections because um, it's much easier to fix the imperfections when uh, it, you don't have the other side on. So go take a look. Make sure that you're, you sew uh, right down to the bands and, and to the top cover as closely as you possibly can uh, with the cording because sometimes it pulls away from it. Okay, so look for okay. imperfections in your sewing. Right, and snip at your corners as you're going along to relieve pressure on the bands. Okay, right. so we're going to take this over, we're going to finish this up, and then all we got to do is the other side, and you got a beautiful cushion. You got to square this cushion off and you do that by transferring one corner the sewn corner of your cushion on over to the other side of the band okay and you do that by simply going to the sewn part of the corner of the corner and line the, the sides up right here okay here's here's the sewn part right or here's the cushion cover right there pinch that line these up line the other side of the band up the best you can so they're straight here and then take your scissors and I've already made a snip here but make a snip just like that okay so when you do that on all corners and you transfer or you take the other side of the cushion and you you make those corners line up now your cushion is becoming square so after I get all these corners done we'll get right back to you and show you how to put the um, or sew the other side of the cushion on all right Okay, so we've made all the marks on all the corners, but there's one more mark you need to do as well. The next step is to center the actual cushion cover itself with the other side. And you can do that the same way you did it the other ones, right? The, the same way. So you turn it over. I saw the notch. You know, this, we made this notch when we first started to sew. We made them together because I have a notch on the, the back of here as well. Okay, so we did these before we even sewed the bands on. So I see that one there. You can represent it by this little chalk mark because that's a little notch there. I made a chalk mark there, bent, to, uh, bent the bands over, lined up the sides, just like he just said, the other side, and then made a snip there. That's so we can start from the back here, the zipper, and get it centered. Okay, so let's line this little notch up. I'll make a white mark so it's easier to see. So these little marks right here, line those up, walk, or walk it on over and the corners are lining up fairly well right there, okay? And over here as well. You might need to do a little bit of adjustments, but you're getting the point. All we're trying to do is keep this cushion from getting askewed, okay. and that's what's important, okay? So start from here and work your way around. Use your marks on the bands, and obviously the corners of the cushion cover itself as your guide. You might need to pull a little bit more, you know, the bottom, I'm talking about the uh, sewing table here, you know, to hold it back a little bit more and then let the top be loose or vice versa, just so those corners line up. Now, as far as the cording, you don't need to do it on the side. You can start right in the center. Just leave yourself about maybe, I don't know, four or five inches, right? 
and then start from there and then sew all the way around and we're going to close it up in the same manner we did the side point. Okay, opening it up, lay it down on the table, make the snip and that's your uh, stitch uh, line. Right. Right there, okay, and then just close it all up. So you're going to see a little bit of this over the table and um, one more tip as well, the sewing table that is, one more tip is when you start to close this up, a lot of times I forget, but open up your zipper right before you're about to close everything up because it's difficult when this thing's sewn closed and so is your zipper. Yeah. Okay, so when you're getting towards the end, just start to open that up a little bit so you can get your hand in there and open it up. Okay, so let's go to the sewing table and get busy. Let's do it. Okay, it's all in. Well, it looks great. It turned out really nice. Something we want you to think about when you're sewing a cushion, especially a T-cushion, is those notches we had you put in the bands. As you sew and go along, make sure the corners are lining up in there. And that applies to any cushion, really. It does. You might need to take it apart and readjust as you go along, but nonetheless, you're going to get it. This thicker fabric did fight a little bit more, but, you know. Yeah, the thicker it is, the more of a fight it puts up. But... If you have a thick fabric, you can still make a beautiful looking cover. Just like this one. Yeah. We actually added some polyfill into the yeah. tees and the corners right there. and makes it a little more plush looking. Right, so you might need some polyfill. So we turned this into this. And you can too. Right, so are you getting sick of that and you want this? Now you know what to do. Thanks for watching. And if you haven't already subscribed, please do so. Give us a thumbs up. Share with a friend. We look forward to seeing you in our next video. Definitely. See you then.